Hello and welcome to Tech Tools Remix, Teaching to the Beat of Digital Innovation. My name is Amanda McCall and I am going to give you a quick rundown of what this presentation would have hopefully looked like if you would have been at NC Bowl with us. Um, so this is me. I'm a media quarter at Morant City Primary School and uh, um, all these different things that I do because I have a hard time saying no to things. Um, I'm a mother of two and I to do me. Um, this is just stating that the purpose of this of this session, which I'm going to kind of skip over at this moment, but you're welcome to come back and look at this when you get time. Uh, and what we hope that you can take from this in the end. I'm going to skip over these things for now, though, because I'll let you go back and read those on your own time. Um, the purpose of this presentation is to talk about two things. We're going to focus on stop motion, and then we're going to focus also on green screen. Um, and these are some of the benefits of stop motion if you haven't done it with your students yet. Um, I'm at a primary school, and so these are the benefits that we see for even our littles. So if our littles can kind of come up with these things and create and build, then the experience that our older kids will have would be even greater. Um, what do you need to do stop motion? So you don't need a lot, actually. Um, an iPad or a Chromebook is ideal. Uh, I think I personally am more comfortable using an iPad just because that's what we've done ours on. But you can use a Chromebook, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about both of those ways today. You need something to create with, so Play-Doh, construction paper, and then just a little bit of creativity. So the next few slides show some different examples of stop motion in the that we've done inside um, our library. So I, like I said, I'm in the media center. Uh, so this was one that we did with our first graders, Wanted, Ralph the Rabbit Book Burglar. And if you click on it, it gives you an example, but it shows um, a sequence of events would be the topic. I don't know if you can hear it. Let's see if you can. So that was just a really quick down and dirty version of the uh, stop motion that our first writers did here. They basically had to do a quick summary of this book um, in like one sentence, essentially, is what we took it down to. So there's that one. Here's another example. We did this with our first writers. Also, they love these stories about there was a cold lady or an old lady who swallowed lots of things. This is great when you're talking about characters and um, and particularly when you're talking about uh, key details or um, events in a story, first, second, next, then. Uh, if you click on this resource, it'll take you to all the resources used. This is how we presented it to our class and we read the story and then students went through it on this page. We sequenced it um, by the kids talking through what happened first, what happened next, what happened after that. Um, we introduced stop motion to the students here so you can have access to all of this. It's got videos and um, it's linked in here to ways to do stop motion. And then these are pieces or templates that we gave to the students to use um, for first she swallowed this, then she swallowed the snowflake, then she swallowed the coal. Um, we showed them how to make stop motion. We, we modeled that for them together uh, in, in front of the class and show them what we expected them to do, not to do. Um, this is some pictures of students actually doing the stop motion. As you can see, we used iPads, which I was talking about earlier. The iPad is kind of hanging over and then the background or setting is down on the floor. These are students kind of in progress. What I would do is I plugged in the iPad to our TV and so I, they could see what I was doing each movement or each step as I was going along the way. Um, we talked about how once you get your iPad set and your background set, those stay in place. The only thing that's moving are, in this case, the materials that the, la the little old lady is eating or swallowing. Everything else stayed still because that's how you make a more realistic movie. And some of these talk about those different things or these different topics to think about. This is an example, and I don't believe the sound is coming through, but if you go through and look at this, you can listen to it and watch in full effect the example of there was an old lady who swallowed some snow. And because this was first grade, um, we did not, because of the amount of pictures you have to take with stop motion, we did not have time for them to say, first she swallowed this, then she swallowed this, then she swallowed this, because that would have been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures. 
and A, they're first grade, and B, um, I only have them for an hour on my side in the encore rotation, and my colleague in the back only has them for um, two days a week, back to back, and an hour on each for her as well. So we just wouldn't have had time to take that many photos. So we kind of condensed it down to this is what each child was saying. Um, just to make it easier because less pictures. We were more concerned with, are they understanding stop motion? Are they understanding how to produce or how to create a product with stop motion? Um, so there's that lesson that you can look through at your convenience. And I know that this is a quick version. So if you end up having questions later, please feel free to reach out and contact me. This is a stop motion that uh, we did with our third graders. If you click this example, um, it, it takes you to where we talked with kids, we combined, it was in April, so that's April was National Poetry Month. So we combined poetry with Earth Day, and um, we talked with the students the first time they came in, the first day on what is poetry, um, particularly what is haiku poetry. We wanted to pick a shorter poem because we knew that they were going to do stop motion with it. And we knew that with stop motion, as I stated earlier, that they had to, um, take a whole lot of photos just for a small amount of, of talking. And so therefore we wanted to pick a form of poetry that would be shorter um, in length. And so we talked to students about how to create a haiku poem. They created the haiku poem. Um, and then the next day they came in and they had to, they got to use Legos or other materials. They got a choice. This was not their first time because again, this is my third graders, and they got to choose either Legos or a different material to create something that matched their poem. So for example, if their poem was talking about uh, cleaning up the ocean, then they created a setting or a background in which their things, their materials or resources were cleaning up the ocean. Again, I don't think you can hear this through Loom, so, but these are here on slide nine, where you can go and you can listen to them. Um, also attached to this is an example of a rubric, and this is the rubric that we used to help, uh, that we gave to the students to kind of show them our expectations. Uh, we read a story about Earth Day. We talked about what haiku was. They had to brainstorm facts. They did this with a, with a group, at least a partner with one, two people, two or three people. Um, we're big on <coughs> collaboration, and so we wanted the students to be able to work together to create this. They created their script. That's where their haiku poem went. This is their planning, where they kind of really thought out what it is they were going to use for their materials. They drew out kind of their vision of what their setting or their background was going to look like. And then this was how we, we would give this to our third grade teachers if they wanted to take a grade on this. Because again, kids are coming to us in the encore rotation. And so we at, and added their final creation to the Google Classroom, but if teachers wanted to go back and take some kind of grade on it, perhaps a writing grade because they've created poetry, perhaps um, a science social studies grade based on what they decided to talk about for Earth Day. Um, these were things that we had for expectations. So that was just something that we gave our teachers to be able to go back and utilize. So that's another example. Um, and then this is a friend of mine in the county named Tanner Caton. She's a fifth grade teacher, and this has some examples of some stop motion that her students have done involving the water cycle. So I'm not going to play that now, but you can go back and look at that. So once we've seen the examples, we're gonna talk a bit about what it looks like to actually create stop motion. So these are two amazing links that will take you. Um, stop Motion Studio in the Classroom has got some great ideas for how you can do it. This is using an iPad, um, and this is how to create using an iPad. Um, because I'm on a computer showing you um, via video right now, I can't talk you through this. But if you go and you turn, you click play on this, it will show you this is me talking through exactly how to create a stop motion video using an iPad. So if you've watched this and you um, get turned around and are not sure, please feel free to reach out to me and I'll be happy to help fill you in on that. But it does show you how to do that. Um, I know that not everybody has access to iPads. For me, it is easier to use an iPad. I stated before, but you can do stop motion without an iPad, and that is using um, Google Slides is one way. There might be another way. That's just the way that I'm most familiar with. So I actually taught myself how to do it using this video right here, stop motion animation with slides. These two resources are here for you. If you click on them, they will take you in and tell you step by step by step what to do 
to create stop motion using Google Slides. So I'm not going to go through that right now because these are here for you, but just so you know those are there. Um, and then if you were at NC Bold, I gave a demo and showed how to do it. Um, there's a resource um, in right here that we talked about how to use it for book care rules. I would do this at the beginning of the school year for particularly for like my third graders who were exposed to stop motion last year. They would, um, this might be a resource that I would have them do instead of just sitting there and listening and talking about book care rules, we might actually get a little bit more in depth and allow them to kind of create some videos that way. Um, so at NC Bold, we had teachers, give teachers the opportunity or those who were there the opportunity to create their own stop motion. We're gonna move on from that. Um, and then how to use stop motion in your building. We asked for teachers to kind of add to this Padlet. So if you have a great idea for how you could use stop motion in your building, I would love for you to click on this Padlet and add to that because I think all of our ideas can just create a greater bank of things to do in the future. There we go. Um, Moving on and talking about green screen. Um, typically, most educators have a little bit more knowledge with green screen. They've been along, around for a while. Um, so I, I did add here the microphone because we don't. We try to use microphones for our green screen. You don't have to, but there is a microphone resource here in case you're interested in the one that we use in our media center. Um, it is one that is wireless, and so uh, and it's got two connected to one um, converter. So why use green screens? It gets students up and moving. It's a social thing. It lets them talk to each other. Um, it gets them just embodied learning more on cross-curricular. Okay, so these are some green screen resources. They're awesome resources. Um, this is a video, this first little one with these kids that I show my kids when we're getting ready to talk about green screen and we're getting ready to record on green screen. This is a video that I show them. They're just kids showing kind of what green screen is in a really like dumbed down way, but it's perfect for kids. This is a great um, s'more. I love it. I asked her her permission. Uh, Janet Quarter, I asked her permission if I could use it. She said yes. It's got lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of ideas. So elementary all the way through high school, these are some great ways that you can incorporate green screen. And so that's a good resource that's there for you. Some um, things you can do so you don't actually have to have a green screen. You can have a pizza box that's either painted green or covered in green paper. You can have an Altoids box um, that you can use like little mini figures in. I haven't done all these things, but there's some really good ideas of ways to use other things. Cold of Pedagogy is another great, um, she's a blogger, she also has a podcast, but they have some good resources for green screen in here as well. All right, um, the next few slides show you examples of how we've done green screen in our building. Um, our third graders at the beginning of the year, actually coming up in the next couple of weeks, we're doing a landform research. It's part of their social studies. They have to research landforms or they have to know about landforms. So we allow each student um, to partner up and they have to, they're each assigned a landform to research. And then um, using Britannica online, once they've researched, they fill in the information on the slide. And then uh, there's a rubric that we give the teachers to grade. The students then work with their partner for about one day and a half to two days, creating their landform. So maybe a volcano, maybe an island. And then we use the green screen to mash them together and to put the students in or on their landform and then share their research. Their research is then uploaded to, to the Google Classroom. And so all of their classmates can then go and see the research. They're kind of not only um, learning about that one landform on their own, but they're also teaching their classmates as well. So they have that authentic audience. Here's an example of one that, that we've done. Um, I don't know that the sound's going to play, but it's here on this slide for you to see. This is a really basic green screen activity. We did this with um, our first graders talking about um, adjectives, character traits. You can do this with kindergartners too. Um, but we talked about only you can be you and students use Kiva planks. If your media center doesn't have PD, um, Kiva planks or if your classroom doesn't have Kiva planks, I would recommend them. You can use them for lots of things. Uh, and students wrote a word out in the Kiva planks that would describe them. The student then went and stood in front of the green screen 
and we were able to put them in or on the word. Some kids were laying on the word, some kids were standing on the word, but just a really easy way to introduce green screen to students and show them how you can kind of combine this picture with them together. This is a really exciting activity we did with our second graders. Um, we did this in April because it's around Earth Day timeframe. Um, we read this story called Crossings, Extraordinary Structures for Extraordinary Animals. If you click on this book, it will take you to the link and it'll give you the lesson plan uh, and the slideshow that we use with our students. Um, but students essentially, um, after we talked about crossings and we, we did a Google Earth where we showed where some of these real authentic animal crossings are because of habitats being uh, torn down, we, they used Kiva planks to create their own crossing over a road um, for animals to be able to cross. And then um, they wrote a poem, an acrostic poem we wrote together as a class, because again, this was first grade. Um, and so we wrote that together as a class and the students stood in front of the green screen and read their poems and were their animal crossing was in the background. So you can see a video of one of the final products here. And then the um, lesson plan is here. Okay, so green screen video tutorials. So there are a couple of different ways to do a green screen. Again, we like using iPads the best, say we, because my ITF and I do a lot of team work together when it comes to this. So that's why I keep saying we. Um, so you can do green screen uh, if you use the iPads, which we do. We like using Do Inc. D O I N K. Do Inc. Um, it is, I, could th I believe it's $3.99, but you have it forever. So like we pay it, we pay for it years and years and years ago, and now we can continue to use it. Um, it is a little more novice, and so it's great for the younger people. If you're in an older, if you're working with older kids, you might want something a little bit more uh, detailed. We Video is great for Chromebook. It's however you pay for that one. It's $4.99 a month. Um, I've used it a little bit on like a free trial and it is cool. It is great for older kids, I think, but again, you're paying for it. And I don't know if that $4.99 a month, I'm not sure if that's per student or how that works, but it's something to look into. Um, you can create green screen videos in Canva. And so I actually use this tutorial to, to kind of figure that out myself, how to do that. So I've inserted this here so you can go in and look at how to do a green screen video in Canva. All right, um, so when we were at NC Bold this summer, we gave uh, some of our people the opportunity to go in and figure out how to do these. Here's what's awesome for you is there are step-by-step directions here. So I gave a couple of different examples of make yourself into an ordered pair or a favorite book character. There are two different ways to use green screen. Um, so if you want step-by-step -step directions on how to do it, um, those are right here. So if you hit, Play on this, it should walk you exactly through how to do this activity. So hopefully that'll be good for you. Um, in the end, this is what it's going to look like. There's an ordered pair right here. So your goal is to have it something like this. So that will be what that looks like in the end. Favorite book character, again, directions are right here. It's a step-by-step -step for how you can do that. But if you go and you look at it and you're unsure, please, again, don't hesitate to reach out and email me and I will be happy to get back with you. Um, these slides were just additional. So they were ones that um, I thought when I initially created this NC Bullet presentation that I was going to have more time um, to go back and talk about some app smashing. So if you click here, um, this will take you to some other ideas. Uh, if you go on to our next slide, it'll take you to some other ideas with um, in your building, in your classroom. You click over here, it'll take you to that. And that's it. So I know that was really quick. It's about 20 minutes. Um, but please, again, reach out to me if you have any questions. My email is amanda.mccall. We have further questions about you.